From 1926 to the present day, from the Piazza di Siena to Madison Square, from small Irish farms to the world's great international arenas, and from cadet to colonel. It's a story of passion, dedication and triumph, always involving an Irish horse. The Army Equitation School is about the Irish bred competition sport horse, show jumper and eventer. We, we promote the Irish horse supporting the Irish breeder. It's a, it's a military unit founded in 1926, conceived at a time when the economic state was at a very, very low ebb, when um, a Swiss colonel uh, complimented and thanked um, Judge Wiley in the RDS. He said, I'll be back again next year to compete on Irish bred horses and beat you again on Irish turf. This motivated what I call the three wise men, Colonel Hogan from the department, uh, Liam Cosgrave, president of the day, and Judge Wiley. The three of them got together and they said, let's do something about this. So they rounded up the best of army horsemen around the country, including Jed Dwyer, Dan Corrie, Buster Harty and the likes. And they, they got them up to the McKee barracks and that was the start of the army equitation school. They had the raw material, the horses and the riders. So they called in Colonel Rod Zianko and he fine-tuned the riding style and um, very shortly tremendous success. The equitation school is about promoting the Irish horse. It's about an image whereby the people of Ireland and the people abroad who are interested in horses can see Irish horses being ridden by good riders in uniform with a very specific picture that is clearly identifiable and relates straight back to Ireland, the Irish horse. And I think that's what ultimately the school is about. I think at home we sometimes take it for granted because we, we're quite used to seeing army horses and army riders. But if you travel and you go abroad and you see the effect it has when Captain David O'Brien or Captain Jeff Kern canters into the arena on a nice quality Irish horse with the tricolour on their saddle cloth, with their uniform and the picture that it shows and the message that it gives out. And it goes all the way back from Colonel Ned Campion, Billy Ringrose in Rome, all those guys the tradition has gone on since the foundation of the Equitation School. That picture has always stayed the same. The faces have changed, the names have changed, but the picture has always been the same. And I think it does serve its purpose. At the time, winning Tattersalls was huge for me, for my own career, because it was my first international win. It was huge for the Army Equitation School, because it was the first international win in eventing that we've had in years. But also, it was huge for Eventing Ireland at the time, because it was the boost that we needed to go to the Hong Kong Olympics. So it was a, it was a, a very timely boost for everybody. Yes, he is. Free Sun Saw was an exciting competition. Uh, it's always good fun. River Foil, I jumped in that last year. It was actually, it was only a catch ride for me. Uh, Michael Kelly had been competing them all year, so uh, we were getting to know each other on the way to the wall. Our trophy room is hard to keep up with it, actually. Even I don't know all the trophies, there's so many of them there. And not only the ones we've got here, there are trophies belong to the Equitation School dotted in various different messes around the country because the guys over the years have been so successful. But they do tell a fabulous story. The Hitler Trophy is in pride of place up in the CO's office. That's probably one of the more iconic ones. Um, it has its own story to tell. Um, the Romulus and Remus Trophy, that's, in, that's very apt at the moment because Queen Elizabeth presented it to Colonel Billy Ringrose when he won the Grand Prix in Rome in Loch Big 50 years ago almost to the day. So there's a huge, there's huge significance in some of these trophies that we have. Tell us about your young horse coming on. Yeah, Hanstown is a nine-year-old horse. Uh, he competed on his first Nations Cup this year in Copenhagen. Uh, and he, he took to it extremely well, he jumped double clear and he won the Grand Prix in Mullingar at the Two Star Internationals in Fagans uh, a couple of weeks back. So he's, he's going to be competed now in the next couple of international shows uh, with the name to the Grand Prix in Dublin. With the Olympics coming up next year, we're, we're seriously focused on getting to London and being competitive when we get there. And hopefully, with a little bit of luck, and with the tradition that we have here and the quality riders that we have here and the improved quality horses that we may just get a little bit of luck on our side and come home with a medal.